brought to you almost live from the dude in the basement studios. Why? Because that's where the good stuff is. It sips, suds, and smokes with your smoke and host, the good old boys. It's sippin' time. Welcome to a very cool Sips episode where everything good in life is worth discussing. I am your hostess, good old gal Juliana, and with me today at the table is good old boy Dave. Hey. Really? That's it. That's all I'm bringing, man. Wow. I'm a Suds guy. All right. Okay. Suds for life. That... (laughs) There's, it feels kind of naked now. <laughs> <laughs> At least Dave is not kind of naked. Yeah. <laughs> Thank God. Bad naked. <laughs> That's the second episode. Oh, man. <laughs> Thank you, next. Go to Boy oh, no, 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 it's just a leg. Honestly, I, I've got another one. <laughs> <laughs> it is True. great to be here. I'm, but I, I am wondering, where's the beer at? Oh, That's another episode. Oh, shoot. You yeah. tricked me. I know. We're, like, a lot of us are foreigners to this type Getting episode. tricked is showing you up and having Zima and Jolly parts. Ranchers on the table. <laughs> Good old boys, Barky. Bonjour, Nobel. <laughs> Welcome to a different table. <laughs> <laughs> and good old girl, Carrie Ann. Welcome back. Thank you. Good to be here for spirits and not Zima. Mm. <laughs> did you do the Zima episode? I did. Oh, she, she How through. did you pull I, that straw, sister? <laughs> Zima and malt liquor. You owe you owe oh, you owe a favor to somebody. Liquor. Wow, malt liquor. <laughs> malt liquor. <laughs> oh my God, that's fantastic. <laughs> wow, that was a fun one. Oh, yeah. those were the Maddie good days. Daddy. Yeah. Fun <laughs> is Daddy. one way to put it. <laughs> well, our sips segments—that's such a weird word to me—are all about wine, distilled spirits, tea, and coffee. This episode is our Amaro 101 episode. Our 101 series discusses the very basics of these products. But before we get into this episode, this segment is brought to you by... Stuff and Things. Do you like stuff? Do you need things? Well, come on down to Stuff and Things. We've got more stuff than anyone, and our things are so competitively priced. Stuff and Things, Things and Stuff, Stuff and Things and Stuff and Things. Now, with more stuff. Okay. So today we are going to be covering the history of Amaro, various types. Oh, thanks. That's I cool. I think that's the wrong word. Amore, Amaro, <laughs> Amore, Amaro. It's, it's the same. Once this you get is a couple America, of drinks, okay, it all sounds the same. <laughs> so the history of Amaro, various types of Amaro, ways to navigate purchasing Amaro, and you know we'll drink a little Amaro cocktails too why Thank not goodness i know well we'll all be needing that good old boy sparky you get the honor of doing our sips ratings today can i can i just apologize in advance to my wife uh she spent a summer in italy and was super obnoxious <laughs> coming back correcting everybody at olive garden saying bruschetta instead of <laughs> y'all want some bruschetta so uh before this happens i just want to just get that out of the way and apologize because i'm going to get a beaten when i get home <laughs> Cue me up, Dave. You were going to get one anyway. <laughs> That's true. I am quite truculent. So, Sips rating one. Give me... <laughs> give me a glass of water to wash out of my mouth. <laughs> Duo. Nice, but what else do you have? Well, isn't that nice? Hmm, this is interesting. What is this again? Interesting. I like the hand gestures. You, if you have to talk with your hands <laughs> if you're Italian hands. or Jewish. Yeah, I mean, right. it's just kind of how that works. It's I was one thinking it was going to be more Godfather. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I have a sack of oranges here. If you guys want. <laughs> Four. Let's keep this a secret to ourselves. Pour me another. That's classified. Sorry. <laughs> and five. Oh my! I was unaware anything could be this good. Oh my goodness! Yes! 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 Yes!
I'm really sorry, entire country of Italy. <laughs> I'm really sorry. That's what she said. <laughs> you did nail the hand gestures, though. Thank you. It you made it easier, actually. Yeah. <laughs> You were very demonstrative. <laughs> Those were perfect. Yes, they were perfect. Mm. <laughs> Make Amaro great again. It's yes. <laughs> oh, no. Oh. It's oh. a hat. I'll have what she's having. Whoa. Wow. Pardon me. Well. <laughs> well, then. So let's get into some background on the subject. The term bitters refers to any number of spirits that are flavored with bitter herbs, roots, and held to have medicinal qualities. Amaro, or amari for plural, is the Italian word for bitter. Amaros range between 16 to 40% ABV. God bless. And their color (laughs) range goes from a bright orange to the deepest molasses. They can be clear or unfiltered. Amaro has been traditionally produced throughout Europe and can range from alpine sourced herbs, flowers and roots to southern coastal areas that are influenced more by citrus and spices brought in by the trade markets. Recent years have seen North American varieties as well, and some pretty good ones too, I might add. A bitter can be produced from macer- macerating. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you, sure you mess read that, that one way up. <laughs> Just remember, if you macerate too much, you could go blind. So just be careful. <laughs> With all those bitter herbs, That's yes. <laughs> Very careful. It's all fun till the macerating is too much. Macerate till you go blind. <laughs> So I'm saying it's a thing. <laughs> Do you macerate with your right hand or your left? I'm a switch hitter. I go both. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say you might have to do both. Yeah. <laughs> I think the true artisans are switch hitters. I always macerate with a friend. It makes it better. <laughs> Somebody's got to take over, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we're sideways already. Yep. Okay. <laughs> that didn't take long, did nope. it? I haven't even had a drink yet. I know. Oh, <laughs> shame on us. Yes, shame on us. So you're talking about macerating. <laughs> yes. Okay, finish, bring it, bring it back. Bring your words. So okay, sorry, <laughs> sorry. Focus, focus, focus. Uh, so we're macerating the botanicals in either a neutral spirit or a wine, uh, mixing the filtrate with a sugar syrup of various degrees of sweetness and allowing the mixture to age in casks or bottles. Hmm, almost sounds like a beer. The most common flavorings from Amaro's include citrus peels, anise, as opposed to something else. (laughs) Tasty tasty anise. You can get just a whiff of anise in this. uh, The lightest star anise. Yeah. Oh. (laughs) No, I think that's regular anise, actually. uh, And believe me, I'm an expert on anise. I heard you like the brown star anus. Sparky's an anus man. Uh, and this is why we will never get to do a Sips <laughs> episode ever again. Probably not. Yes. Oh, there's other reasons. No. <laughs> we'll discuss those later. So, cardoons are another one, and licorice, fennel, cinchona, cinnamon, ginger, lemon balm, menthol, mint, lemon verbena. Cardamom, thyme, th- thyme. Oh my god! Wow, thyme. Still have not yeah. started drinking. <laughs> what thyme? Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. What, what, what thyme is it right now, guys? <laughs> like a nice pair of thymes. Yeah, English as a second language, apparently. Uh, juniper, saffron, sage, bay laurel, wormwood, angelica, gentian, and elderflowers, just to name a few. That's some pretty. This sounds like my new line of lubes. <laughs> Well, I mean, no. we were. If you're gonna macerate, make gentian. sure that you have some of these. You gotta have some gentian. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yes. Yes. It's very important. Very, very important. Keep down the friction. <laughs> <laughs> Greeks. Yeah. The Greeks. Greeks. Like oh, let's go back. To, let's go to the Greeks. Can we? Uh, can we do something else? <laughs> no. No. We're gonna focus. Power through. Focus. Yes. So Greeks, Romans, and Egyptians were considered botanicals to be very medicinal. They infused medicinal herbs and wines in jars of wine, and thus that began this whole concept of what an Amaro is. Um, And 
some really do help at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, I, I'll be honest. I there's uh, you know one in particular. Uh, I love. Uh, oh God, what's the? We were just talking Underberg, right? Mm-hmm. I mean, Underberg. that's man, yeah. that, that stuff has saved my life more than once. From, that's the end of the night. Yeah, yeah. Bad that's taco good, decisions. That's a good bad go to decisions. You know, a, yeah. a bottle of Underberg a day. Yeah, is, is for a, really a healthy life. Thing. Yeah, absolutely yeah. for a healthy life. <laughs> this episode was sponsored by Underberg. <laughs> <laughs> if only we'd all be so I know, happy, right? But eat true. <clears throat> and I, I think now that we're getting into this day and age of kind of going back to basics and back to very artisanal cocktails, artisanal um, ingredients. I will say if there's a Amaro's CBD Amaro that comes out, I'm going to flip this table and set this house on fire. So just <laughs> think it's too late. No, damn it. <laughs> CBD is the new thing, man. I know. It fixes everything, don't you? It does. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's of like course. It's like the duct tape of... It's too bad the Greeks didn't know about it. Yeah. I know. It's true. Or unless maybe they did and they mm-hmm. just didn't share back then. Who knows? Quit Bogart in that uh, CBD joint, the Romans. <laughs> 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 okay, so... So let's get into styles quickly. Um, The first style is light, lighter in color, and heavy citrus notes. Examples of that would be Aperol. And um, medium is an even balance between bitter, sweet, and citrus. Examples of that would be the Montenegro and the Campari. Fernet, the darkest and very sharp and bitter and very polarizing, I think, to a lot of people. <laughs> Example of that would be Fernet Branca. The Alpines, made with herbs from mountainous regions. Uh, example of that would be Amaro Braulio. The Tartufo, which is made from black truffles from Umbria. Sadly, not available in the States yet, but I'm holding, I'm holding hope. The um, Carchiafo, and forgive me if I say that wrong. Made with artichokes, an example is Chinar. We'll be back in just a minute with some more. Welcome back, everyone. (laughs) So, this is a special Sips episode where we are talking about Amaro 101. Still not it. Well, we are Suds people doing a Sips episode. It's so. true. Speak for yourself. <laughs> the, the heathens have taken over the fancy place. Am I the only it. Sips rep here? You are. Yep, yep. I got to hold down the fort. We're I feel surrounded. responsible now. These yeah. are lean times, right. my friend. Lean times. <laughs> true that. So we were discussing styles of Amaro, and we went through the light, medium, frenet, alpine, tartufo, Oh, I want to try that someday. I really do. Um, Cars, Carciofo. Carciofo. <laughs> and then there's also the China, which is made with the bark of a Chinchona Calisea. I believe so in like this a, country that's yeah, pronounced Chula. China. <laughs> <laughs> yes. It's a and huge Chinchina. A, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> An example of that would be the Bigelay China China Amaro. And last but certainly not least, and one of my absolute favorites, would be the Rebarbero. Rebarbero? In other words, rhubarb. <laughs> and the oldest and most popular version of that would be the Zucca. So, bitterness is a flavor. Did you Zucca? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nice. Nice. Bitterness is a flavor that is usually acquired and takes time to develop and appreciate it. So, what does bitter mean to you guys? Well, it started in my 40s. And I have (laughs) pulled another fair, fine beverage for you. Hashtag born bitter. I I think of him when I hear the word bitter. Bitter. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. Sounds right. Oh, get up by Mike. We miss you. <laughs> <laughs> it's on the bitter bus. Yeah. But, but, I mean, that's certainly, as a kid, you don't like anything that's bitter. And I think most vegetables were considered bitter to me as oh, a yeah. kid. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, that sounds about right. So did you guys not eat your vegetables as kids? Mm, no, rarely. Really? I Your parents gave you a choice? It was forced. No, okay. not really. See, I, think I just I'm didn't the outlier always comply. Here. Yeah. Oh, okay. I spent some time in the hole if uh, yeah, right. I didn't eat the vegetables. Hole. So yeah. Carrie ate her vegetables. That's why she grew I up did. so nice I and tall. I did. I loved all those yeah. Brussels sprouts. I'm like, bitter the better. I've always liked bitter. 
that's kind of been um, your that's thing. your thing. That's been a thing of mine. So I was super excited when I found bitter things to drink. Oh well, yeah. So what, what was your well? Speaking of which, what was your first amaro? How did you? I mean, I think for me it was. I mean, I'm sorry, but probably Jägermeister. I, I mean, think if, that's a lot of us. Yeah, in, yeah. in that space, um, which you know, it's amazing because that 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 was such a huge thing a while ago and now they're trying to bring it back as in position it more of like a, I don't know, luxury, you know, like where you've got garbage, like a fireball or something like that, which has probably filled that space where it yeah. was, na- you know, back in the day. Now you've got, uh, now they're trying to bring back, you know, Jägermeister as, you know, a fancy, you once know. you're paired with Red Bull though, it's kind of hard to, it's hard to come back. back. Yeah. <laughs> That's a God. great point. Yeah. I remember those days. Those days are gone, right? We're not doing that again. <laughs> no, not right. tonight. No, no, not tonight. Yeah, that's that's show three. But for me, at least, it was it was kind of I abandoned that space completely until I found out about Fernet and Minta Branca and was really big into making cocktails and yeah, I just started drinking that stuff straight like it was my job. <laughs> <laughs> but it is your job. <laughs> oh yeah, that's true. In a way, yeah. But I think one yeah. of the first ones like that you got me into like. Was trying like chinar. Yeah. The, yeah, man. Yeah. Um, that's, that's a, a vegetable. I know. It it's is. True. It's now I eat eating my your vegetables. <laughs> Drink your vegetables. Drink them, eat them. And that's even better. Liquor helps Smoke everything. Them. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, I'm in the Jaeger yeah. camp too because that was. Thank the you for thing. not leaving me hanging out there. No, yeah. I mean, no. I think a lot of us were. That definitely yeah. would have been my first one too. Yeah, exactly. But then I discovered chinar. And, oh, my God, it just opened up a whole universe. And, you know, I got my first, I remember, I still remember getting my first bottle. And then it was like, oh, my gosh, this is Amaro? What is this, like, strange sorcery you're talking about? And there's more like this? And, um, well. Who would think you could drink a friggin' artichoke, you know? Well, you know, again, yeah. liquor just kind yeah. of fixes Everything. Everything it covers up a lot of it stuff. Does. It does. It yeah. does. Yeah, it does. It helps with bitterness. Yeah. <laughs> it does. Not for everyone. <laughs> hey, Mike. It might intensify <laughs> it. Yeah. Well, speaking of Amaro's embittering agents and, and all things um, really complex and beautiful, let's get into some Amaro's. So the first one that I think would be cool to start with, going from light to dark, of course, would be the Aperol. So unlike many of Northern Italy's Apertivo liquors, Aperol isn't exactly red, but it's rather reddish orange. It's almost... um, Looks like Benadryl. Fluorescent. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You can use it in place of Benadryl. It actually works better. Is this made with baby ant fetuses? Is that how they color it? No. No, it's no, not that. that uh, is that what I'm wait, tasting? I, you know, wait. We, we should probably... Isn't that the Campari thing, too? Or is that That's, Aperol? That was Campari. Campari. It but, was. But then it went away, and now it's coming back? Or yeah. Wait. Okay, yeah. Alle- allegedly. We'll get to that. We'll get to that. Allegedly. Yeah. Yeah. Unbirthed ants? Wow. So... <laughs> dark. It's a dark place. <laughs> That's why we don't do Sips episodes. That's true. <laughs> so this was conceived by Fratelli Barbieri in Padova, Italy in 1919 and consists of an infusion of bitter and sweet oranges, rhubarb, yes, and a secret mixture of herbs and fruits. And that is going to be a very... Herbs and spices. Co- the yeah. common theme is secret. Exactly. Secret is big in the world of Amari. Amari. Stuff Amari. I got in my yard. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So in 2004, which, I mean, in the scheme of things, isn't that long ago, Mm -mm. it was the year after Grupo Campari bought Aperol. The parent company embarked on an aggressive marketing campaign, which positioned the new acquisition as the quintessential ingredient for the Venetian spritz, which later became known as Aperol spritz, which has had like a, a big resurgence of late. So unlike its sibling, Campari, Aperol is fairly low in alcohol, and it is just 11% ABV. Dude, it used to be delicious. stupid cheap like, like a, back in the day, like too. Like it used to be, what? Everything used to be cheap. I know. <laughs> back in my day, you could get a shiny neck over. Four cents. <laughs> <laughs> but of course, 
Tons of oranges, though, right? I, I mean, like oranges this. for days on yeah. the nose. But it was, yes. it was all cheap before they started spending all the money on marketing. Now we have to pay for the marketing. You so can stop can marketing. I, I will still we buy it. Drinking if it. you just cut me like 25% off, deal, deal. Cool. Sure. You're sure. welcome, Grupa cheers. Campari. Um, what's the cheers like in this. Italian? Chin chin? Is chin that chin? it? I don't think so. I think that's China. <laughs> no, you mean China. <laughs> Is that racist? Feels racist. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, that's only when we drink Negronis. Uh, but very, what's up, Negroni? It's Negroni Week. We sh- <laughs> you know what? I'm not we even going to do not it. Not fail to mention. No. We are yes. in the middle. We are in the middle of no. that. It's very light on the tongue. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, obviously for the ABV, it's not going to be like super syrupy like some of the Amaros. But that orange flavor just lingers and lingers. With a nice little bit of bitterness. Where does the, the bitterness end. come from? Is that the bitter rhubarb? The bitter the, orange? The oranges so. are bitter. Yeah. Sure, the orange, the rhubarb, the and, the rhubarb. and the little secrets and special the, things. It's, in the, it's from the little old Italian I mean, this still has plenty it. of sugar in it. Cut your mm-hmm. whole mouth in that. That's true. There's yeah, yeah, plenty of that. sugar. So the bitter yeah. is, the, is the aftertaste compared to like some of the other Amaros that punch you in the throat with the bitterness. Yeah, sure. Twist sweet your mouth upside Sweet in the front. Bitter in the back. Yeah. Yep. What do you want? <laughs> but very Dynamic. approachable. I'm okay very with that approach- arrangement. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 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 All right. For everybody. <laughs> so, what would we be rating, Aperol, if we were rating people? I mean, I would say. Th- what? I love Aperol. Oh, All right. Four. Four. Yeah, gonna, I mean, I think, yeah, it's okay. a quintessential We're going to rate this a four. Sips rating of four. Well, that's cool. At least that sounds good. I am going to be the number five on all of these. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Give okay. them to me. <laughs> all right, moving on. Carrie Ann will pull up the vote on. <laughs> she will pull up the vote every time. But that's a good thing. That's a good thing. We need positivity. We do. So going dar- a little Mike. bit darker in color. Let's go um, in the orange vein, I guess, is go to Campari, the classic among classics. So Campari is a universally recognized as the industry leader. And I mean, that's the one, I think that's the one bottle you're going to see at every bar in America. (laughs) And Carrie Ann's so in the much corner, goodness. and I'm so happy. she's having a <laughs> so happy moment. She's, quite having a, uh, quite she's a, actually <laughs> macerating right now by herself <laughs> with my line of yes, herbal lubricants. Herbal, yeah. Mm-hmm. Don't yes. forget that Genetian. Somebody uh, should do it. I, sure. Why hasn't it been done already? Should have done our research. It's probably out there. Probably is. Could be out there, yes. This is quite a departure from the uh, Aperol. Much more bitter. Herbal. Yeah, it is. It's um, aggressive. It is aggressive, and it's all over your palate. Yeah. Yeah. And this was created by Gaspari Campari in <laughs> 1860. <laughs> what? I'm sorry. You think his friends weird. called him Gassy? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, gassy, come on Maybe that's why he invented this because it's like a digestive. You know what? Yeah, to Got help rid of his gassiness. I may be gassy, but you won't be. Try. And so, uh, you know, this is obviously the the classic for the Negroni, right? Mm-hmm. The classic, yes, yes. Which we'll get into a little later. Okay. But um, Campari did discontinue the use of the natural. Cochineal derived coloring agent, mm-hmm. otherwise known as that special red. Um, <laughs> it was it was bugs, right? So it was yeah. And do you know now? Do you know why they had to discontinue it? Because people are because EU BS stuff. Oh, are those mm-hmm. yeah. say like the ASPC? Yeah, no, it was totally an no. EU thing. They yeah. were like, you ASPCA. can't make stuff with Sarah McLaughlin was like, no more of that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> she wrote a song about she it. Did. It, it, it kind of chokes me up beetle. every time I see that. Oh, man. Think of this poor beetle. All right, fine. Yeah. Here's $5 and I'll stop drinking Negronis this week. <laughs> Jerk. But this, uh, the orange zest in this. God, it's so beautiful. Yeah. And since this is, you know, at 24%, it's going to stick on the tongue. It's it's lip smacking, I think. So if it if it has quinine... 
that's definitely that, obviously a huge will that bittering keep you agent. From mm-hmm. Getting malaria. Yeah, I mean, possibly. Mm-hmm. This is, I mean, yeah, let's go get some mosquitoes. I'm pretty sure we got some West Nile <laughs> stuff going on out here. That's close enough, right? Let's go West Nile, yeah. malaria, yeah. Get same some thing. Mosquitoes. Sure. Yeah. It's close yeah. enough. Up yours, mosquitoes. Come yeah. on with it. Bring it. That's Bring right. the pain. Oh, you don't like bitter? That's how I <laughs> oh, be now. What? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have any words. I turned for 40. This. Wow. <laughs> but this is. I, I what do you lo- think, Kendall? I love this. I, I like it. Um, the other one was a little too sweet, but I, I like the bitterness on this one. And the orange, it hits you at first, but then it, it it's just kind of a little overpowered by the when those herbs kick in. Yeah. The little, yeah. It's kind of the vegetal. And there's, and there's a lot if of by overpowered, do you mean delicious? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe somebody wants to be overpowered, Kendall. <laughs> I think the one of the things I love about Campari the most is um, for this cocktail applications, it goes just as easily in gin as it does in bourbon. And yeah, it just really adds an awesome level of balance to all well, kinds of different Maybe part of that drinks. is the, how strong the flavor is. It, it can stand up to any of the you know, yeah. higher spirits. You know. um, the and then, spirits. you know, I think we were talking about, too, just uh, going back to the bug juice flavoring or coloring or whatever it is coloring coloring sorry i mean come on you can't say that it doesn't affect the it has to be juice fla- doesn't even have a flavor it's like vodka beetlejuice 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 <laughs> oh um, no you did but um but i i was just thinking well I, I think i've heard that now they've reversed it over the like past couple of years so maybe that's a thing again and i'm fine with that because this is delicious you know why it is because they started getting overrun with friggin beetles and they're like Damn it. How do we get rid Who's of Who's going to control the beetle population? Or maybe whatever red food coloring they're using had other <laughs> unintended consequences. Or Well, I think it was like going back to like a natural, yeah. you know, everything needs to be natural and organic. Why does it have to be red? Why not? Ooh. I mean, I mean, these are the questions we need answers to. <laughs> <laughs> On the next stunning episode of <laughs> Sip, Suds, and Smoke. <laughs> Amari's part two. What what would, really happened? Yes. What would blue Campari taste like? Uh, would that be oh, like that's be- natural blue, not Windex. Yeah, trust sure. me on that. Like blue curacao, yeah, that's right. Campari yes. ice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'll be a great episode. Mm. Um, so in the Campari land, what did we rate the Campari? Ten. <laughs> How about a four? Oh, okay. <laughs> find. And just, just a disclaimer, Carrie Ann's five on all of these. Yes. <laughs> and we've already filled up her cups three times. So that's that's so only getting get better. Um but, but there's no d- alcohol in these, so that's That's fine. true. Well, actually that's what I was gonna ask about. Did you guys get more of the alcohol burn since this is like more than twice X? A little bit, but really not, not, not really. really. I think I think no. the bitterness even overwhelms the alcohol. Just yeah, interesting. Yeah. I was curious what your I'm just extra about. sensitive. I don't really mm-hmm. taste alcohol until about hundred and twenty proof. <laughs> <laughs> there's only one way to find out for sure. Yeah. <laughs> but I think that's what makes um Amari's like so cool to me is that you don't taste the alcohol. It's really going to sneak up on you, but it really lets the other, um, when you're doing it in cocktails, it lets the other ingredients really like shine. You know what I mean? Yes, yeah. totally. Unlike us um, gluttonous, drunken Americans, some countries just drink a Campari and soda. They mm-hmm. don't need other liquors to make it stronger. And so I think these are all great um, with a soda or Maybe a little kava or something, but that you can have a low alcohol cocktail with these without adding in like a super high proof spirit. No, and I mean, that's a, you know, just so elegant, you know, after a meal just to take or before your meal. Classy. Little, yeah, classy. Not, not alcoholic, classy. Yeah. Thank you, Judge. Very classy. Hope you understand. What's <laughs> well, but in, a, but in a day and age where we're in excess of so many things, it's to me like having a spritz or even having a Negroni. A Negroni is only three ingredients, you know, which we'll are all three it. alcohol. But sti- <laughs> right, but but still though, I mean, it's yes. only three ingredients. You don't need a lot because the Amaros have so much, so many layers going on there. Yeah, yeah totally. you know, agreed. I, I mean, I could sip these every night, and I'm okay with it, like without even adding anything else. Anyway. I was just thinking of like sitting down to my kids and phoning it in with a. Veggie chicken nugget and macaroni and cheese. And dad, why are you drinking a Negroni? Just, shh, it's, 
it's classy. Everything just got classier, kids. <laughs> I'd really like to revisit this go to veggie chicken nugget idea. But yeah, <laughs> sorry. Well, next. What that. happened was <laughs> yeah. it's called a vugget. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's called child abuse. Oh, yes, of course. All right, moving on. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's not called love. So let's <laughs> talk about the Amaro Montenegro. Ooh. Distilled in Bologna, Italy. Made mm. from a secret blend of 40 botanicals, including vanilla, orange peel, and eucalyptus. That's bologna. Okay. Can Good you to taste know. the bologna? Yeah, it's, it's in there. <laughs> and in it there. was named after Princess Elena of Montenegro. So there's that. Now, the color on this is leaning more in like the terracotta, hmm. you know, going, going into that cola neck of the woods. Thoughts? Oh, <laughs> it's brown. <laughs> yes, these are varying shades of brown. Yeah, I think it does it does have a very almost color uh, cola like color to it when you mm-hmm. hold it up to the light. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. This is Dr. Yeah. Pepper. <laughs> I, I snuck in some Coke syrup, y'all. Is y'all weren't expecting tea? that. But speaking Austin. of which, there is a bit of cola in it, don't mm-hmm. you think? Oh yeah. Oh, like and this. vanilla. We'll be right back after this brief interlude. Welcome back, everyone. So this is a sip segment where we are talking about Amaro 101. (laughs) And uh, we were talking about Montenegro. And it's lovely this time of year. Yes, it is. I'm sure. Beautiful Montenegro. So lightly cola ish. A little bit. Very complex. I, I definitely yeah. get that eucalyptus. I'm getting the so Hall's yeah. vapors from. Oh yeah, yeah. That's I think a lot more of this one's a super <laughs> complex. I think it's kind of two the, note. <laughs> the Hall's eucalyptus sound from <laughs> eucalyptus <laughs> cola. I thought yeah. the tape was skipping for a second. <laughs> I know, really. It I was like, have a whole a lot of ups and downs in it. It's not my most favorite, but yeah. but it's easy. It's easy. Yes, yeah, it's I very like it. it's very yeah. easy. And we rated the Amaro Montenegro a four three. Wow, this three. is three. Three. A three? I thought it was a four. <laughs> I thought it was a four too, but then everyone downgraded oh, it to sorry. a three. Sorry, you're interesting. Three. <laughs> it is interesting. And unfortunately, I believe trivially, this is no longer available in our fine state of Tennessee. That is. Oh, I rate that a Hold it out. That is sad. That is sad. Okay, next up is going to be Chinar. Chinar. Yes, this is from Veneto, Italy. Um, the main ingredient is artichoke and 12 other secret special herbs and botanicals. So Chino, that's how people in Alabama say China. <laughs> and interestingly, this is 16.5%. Only 16.5%. I get the 16. I don't, I'm not getting the half. You're not getting the half? Okay. Try a couple more sips because mm-hmm. I had that same problem. About the fourth sip was that extra half kicking in. That's what she said. Yeah, it... it it is definitely kind of savory, you know, vegetal. Yeah. I remember I the first time I ever had this, this this might have been the first thing. Actually, before I had Ferna Branca, I might have had this because I think I purchased it specifically to make a set of cocktails that use Chinar. And uh, and I went crazy with it. But I could never – I'm an artichoke whore. I love artichokes. And I got none of it from that. That's weird because you are also a cherry whore. You know. He's just a whore. <laughs> yes. Whore. A sometimes, filthy, dirty whore. Sometimes you have to admit you're just a whore. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> I can't spruce it up anymore. I get a lot of cola on this one, too, mm-hmm. though. The, you know? Definitely, like cola yeah. syrup, yeah. Yeah. But syrup. like a more, uh, yeah, a more like true syrupy, like when I was a kid, I used to have that cola syrup, you know, to help me feel better. That kind of cola. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Was that when they put cocaine in it still? Or Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm with you. Yeah. I faked I did it. some cola lines. I'm yeah, with you. I yeah. faked illness a lot back then. <laughs> Just picking up what you're laying down. <laughs> wow. really, she was a cola whore. Uh, yep. <laughs> I think it's interesting. I've been seeing, you know, the Fernet has been like the bartender's handshake forever. And now, you know, the, we're too hip for our own good in Nashville. So uh, the bartenders are now using Chinar as... The new bartender's handshake hey. because we can't for not anymore. Do they have a ironic facial hair tattoos and, um, you know, skinny jeans? Yeah. No. Mm-mm. No. Leather aprons. They don't have those. No. <laughs> Boo. Mm. All that. And yeah. for those of us that do not know what a 
Fernet slash Chinar slash whatever Amari it is for the night handshake is. The bartender's handshake? Yeah. Is a shot the bartender's going to give another bartender or somebody else that he might like? And not to be to com- bed. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, well, there's the bartender's hand job, but that's a whole different <laughs> wow. situation. Different story. Yeah. Wow. That's what we make the lube for. <laughs> to bring it sure back around. Always comes back bring to masturbating. I think I have a button yeah. for that, but I don't. <laughs> no. But it's not here. Yeah, no. Sorry. Womp womp. Um, you could never find the button. <laughs> any other thoughts? Whoa. On- <laughs> wow. Any other thoughts on Chinar? Yeah, I wasn't looking. <laughs> there's it. It's it is a great mixer too, and even in its own right, there's so many great cocktails that you can bring this into to add those really complex cola vegetal notes. Mm-hmm. It's a fun. It's a fun one to play with in cocktails. Yeah, it is. And Chinar and bourbon, for whatever reason, Churban? I really, yeah, Burbar. I I, <laughs> I like it a lot. I like it a lot. It's a good drink. So we rated Chinar a four. That's classified. Now, last but certainly not least in this flight is the Fernet Branca. Dun, dun, dun. Yes, the one that Argentinians is love, love, love. Argentinians? Love. Argentinians? Yeah. Really? Yes. My Ar- rabbi's Argentinian. I'm going to have to it's, try that out. Tell him how much mm. Fernet Branca okay. he drinks. Word. Um, and well, then like- people from San Francisco, too, they absolutely love. Love, it's love. the true San Francisco Argentina treat. Argentina is like half it Italians, is. half Nazis. That's right. true. Yeah. Somewhere in between there. Plus your rabbi. That's true. Mm, wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> so this is very, very dark. Very, you know, molasses-y dark cold. <laughs> oh, it's been a minute. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I love this stuff that's so bit, much. That's bitter. This is it what is. you drink before you go shovel snow. <laughs> <laughs> And what, Menta Branca after you get back? Is yeah. that? Yeah. Just, you know, it's yeah. funny that to me, Fernet Branca has a lot of mint qualities Already, to it. yeah. And then you come back to Menta Branca, uh, which is just, just mm. mouthwash. So, like a smoked a pack of cool. So sweet. But it is, so, you're right. It is so sweet in comparison. It's crazy. Um, it's the kinder, gentler Fernet. It is. But this is just, this is, this is so classy yeah, to me. This is so classy. And, and this just reminds me of what Amaro really is. It's all those layers and that complexity, and it just lingers on the tongue, and you get layer after layer after layer. I think you should. Energizer Bunny. This is one yeah. you should definitely try somewhere before you go buy a bottle. Yeah, uh, you're you're probably right about that. And and I would say, too, that, you know, if I don't have Underberg around, Fernet Branca is like my classic i just ate something that is very bad for me and this is my only chance it'll burn it out yeah yeah. definitely some similar flavors you know uh actually bill cosby has an amazing bit about this now but we can't really talk about him anymore because he's a monster but uh there's a fantastic fernet branca uh bit that he did uh one time you should listen to it it's pretty funny yeah i i remember from um a while ago seeing that and thinking, well, that's really interesting. I wouldn't have pleg- pegged him as, <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Yeah. As enjoying Fernet. Oh, know, he didn't. But. That was the. Well, um, see, the bitterness the, of it covered up the, the taste of the drugs he had yeah. diluted in yeah, it. That's probably. Yes. Oh, God. Probably what have we the, become? Yes. Uh, well, there's that. No more pudding pops. Nope, I guess not. So what did we rate this one? Fernet Branca. 25. A four for most humans oh. and Carrie a thousand for you know Carrie what? Ann. You know what? I'm giving this one to Carrie Ann. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I'll have what yeah. she's having. Yeah. You should. Okay. So now that we've done some taste testings of some individual. <sighs> it just keeps going. It does. It, just it, keeps it is. Going. An, That's what she yeah. said. It is mm. a bunny. It's a big Good old shape. bunny. Let's get into a couple of cocktails. Now, the Spritz has made a comeback of late, and there are a few restaurants here in town that now serve not one, but multiple Spritzes, which I think is is really rad. Um, And I think for summer, this is such a beautiful go-to. Quintessential. It is. It is. It's wonderful. I'm thinking it. It's almost like a, I won't say it. Say it. Go ahead, say it. A seltzer. 
<laughs> hey, somebody has Almost. to have uh, like a canned Aperol spritz, right? I mean, that's got to be a thing. How is that not a thing? I don't. Uh, right. It would need to be. A throw thing. in some beer because knowledge. Because the people who buy oh. things in cans don't want to drink bitter. Hey, yeah, yeah, maybe. But Highland uh, Brewing out of Asheville has a beer that uh, was inspired by this cocktail, and it's delicious. Hmm. Very, very similar. What's it called again? Oh, wow. The Tart Spritz. Tart Spritz. Tart Spritz. That is nuts. I've been called that before. Yeah. At least half of it. <laughs> I think I called you that, actually. Well, I think the when they started um, doing the ads for this, I remember hearing, you know, this is easy. This is just the three, two, one. Bam, bam, bam. Exactly. Um, and that's exactly what it is. So it's. Three ounces of Prosecco and two ounces of seltzer and one ounce of the beautiful Aperol. And so refreshing. So, so refreshing. Great color, too. It's like Orange Crush. But so much better than Orange Crush. There is a certain yeah. master distiller of Tennessee whiskey that when we get together, we drink Aperol Spritz. Nice. No way. <laughs> Aww. No way. That's kind of cute. <laughs> Nice. Why? You're not going to drink bourbon, that's for sure. Yeah, well, because you're drinking It's bringing them. your work home, man. Yeah. Yeah. Well, first of all, they make Tennessee whiskey. Second of all. All right. Wow. Mm. Fair. All right. There's that. Even There's in that. our own state, we can't get any respect. There's Rodney Dangerfield when we need him. <laughs> <laughs> well, one of the things that I like about this, though, anyways, is for as sweet as it is with the orange, you still get like this just just enough bit of a bitter to make it really refreshing. And um, obviously the Prosecco and the seltzer just add to the lightness of this. I mean, I could have these all afternoon. I could get all lost day. in this. Yeah, this you is know? totally a pitcher drink. Like mix up a pitcher of this and just you're good. Yeah, but like certainly to me, this just reminds me of like an Italian version of a Pimm's cup, you know? Oh, uh, yeah. I could see that. Um, you know, minus the cucumber-ness that you get with Pimm's, but um, Man, I, I feel like we're Pimm's missing our this. zested orange. Yeah, well, I was trying to make, I was going quick when I made these. Sorry. It's delicious. Not the bougie. I was just getting to the point, which, you know, in the scheme of things. Sparky just got to the point. I, there was a hole in my glass. <laughs> I request a replacement beverage. Sparky's got a hollow leg to fill. It's well, true. Okay. Well, we rated the Aperol Spritz. A million. Oh. Oh. Four for a lot of humans, <laughs> but again, 10,000 for you. <laughs> and we would be remiss if we did not dive into the classic of all classics, the Negroni. Happy Negroni week. Yes. Pour one out Negroni for your Negronis. Week, happy. Chin happy chin. I Negroni. still don't think chin chin's the right thing. Um, yeah. Somebody Google that. <laughs> yeah, that is the perfect balance. It it really, really is. No, it really is. Um, And just out of curiosity, what gin did you use in this? And then what um, vermouth? vermouth? I used Beef Eater. Okay, gin. good choice. And so I like you. The um, well, thank you, thank you. Because we actually, um, good old boy Dave and I went through uh, two or three different gins to come up with hard, this version. Yeah. yeah, and the vermouth is. I think Leatherby would have been a good choice. <laughs> it's good stuff. Oh, oh, oh. makes uh, such a beautiful in, Negroni. In Italy is uh, salute. Oh, salute, salute. Salute chin. <laughs> <laughs> Salute chin chin. Um, the, um, oh, the one with the red wax. Oh, the, my gosh. Oh, uh, Carpana Antica? Yes, Carpana oh, Antica. Oh, wonderful. Maker's yes. Mark. Yes. Yeah, Maker's oh. Mark. <laughs> <laughs> that is the best vermouth that, ever. <laughs> they get, yeah, you get to dip your own vermouth bottles. It's pretty awesome until amazing. you get the wax on you, unless oh, you're into that kind of thing, in which well, case that's yeah. – I'm not yes. judging. I'm no, just saying. Yeah. That's a whole different thing. Yeah. Yes. So the nice thing about uh, the very traditional oh compar um, Negroni is that it's a one-one-one ratio. Yeah, it's an easy cocktail to to crank out, mm -hmm. and and uh, I uh, do. Do you prefer yours on the rocks or uh, up? What do you guys? I'm one ice cube only. One ice mm -hmm. cube. Yeah, I like it up. You like it up. Same. In this drink, 
Yeah. Well, I will confess, this is the first time I've ever had one, and I'm oh, thoroughly enjoying it. No yeah. way, dude. I'm not a cocktail Welcome. person. Okay. okay. You know, you know that about there's me. There's still yeah. there's still hope for you. We the only thing I you. blend is beers. Well. Uh, yeah. Blends, this bro. is a this yeah, is man. an all alcohol cocktail, so it's not a cocktail. It's slam usually, so mm-hmm. I like it to not have ice in it because I also don't like it to get watered down. Gotcha. Chill I, it. I like it. It's really balanced. You get some sweetness. You get that bitterness that's still there when we were drinking it by itself. Mm-hmm. And it, it just blends wonderfully. And, and it's, yeah. it's not as light as the the, the spritz we had. But right. It's, it's a very nice beverage. No, and I think the bitterness interacts so well. I mean, Carpano Antica is maybe one of my most favorite vermouths. I mean, I love vermouth, sweet vermouth in general, but Carpano Antica is just such a great product. And it is. It's so complex in its own, yeah, you know? Yeah, um, no question. But it's got that nice little sweetness, too, mm-hmm. to it that just kind of um, cuts through the Campari, you know, and just, I, I don't know, brings it all to life. I love the yeah. way that botanicals play together with the gin. All of those things have mm-hmm. one, so too. Is that where the sweetness is coming from? Is it a sweet vermouth? Yes, yeah. it's mm-hmm. a sweet vermouth. And do you have yeah. to use sweet vermouth in a yes, Negroni? You yeah, do. you do. For it to okay. be called a Negroni. Okay. And there's and, such a yeah. thing as a white Negroni, but that's a old... Um, those are people that have like an identity crisis. You usually see white Negronis wearing baggy pants, and yeah. uh, they're just really oh. hanging on the wrong team. Oh, and then the smell as they walk by. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's so, really okay. Yes. Um, but no, uh, Kendall. So you're getting sweetness from the sweet vermouth and from the um, um, uh, Campari as well. Okay. So you're kind of doubling and if you up. You switch the gin out for bourbon, then you have a Boulevardier, which is a whole mm-hmm. other situation. Oh, cool. It is yeah. a party. That yeah. sounds delicious. It is. It is. It is. <laughs> <laughs> All together now. Yes. Um, so we rated the Negroni an obvious five. One bit. Oh, my goodness. Yes. We ran yes. out of numbers. Sorry, yes. Karen. Yes. Yes. This really is a beautiful classic cocktail. It is, man. And it's yeah. one of those things, you know, like I love a great classic gin martini. You know, it's very few ingredients. Um, you know, Negroni is the same way to me. It's just something great, not too complex. You can crank a bunch of them out in a short amount of time, and yeah, yeah. But I think, and the gin, I think, is just an. You don't want a crazy gin in this one, you know. No, with, I would. Tend with to everything agree. else that's going on, you yeah, just yeah. Don't want let it get easy. lost, yeah, because you've already got a lot going on there to begin with. True. Well, lastly, just in the scheme of things, where does one find Amaro in the liquor store? So it's going to be in a number of places, whether it's in its own section with bitters or with liqueurs. It could be any number of places. But ask where the Fernet is and you'll find the rest of them usually. Yeah. I think in, in some of the bigger um, liquor stores, they'll actually have their home big section. Mm-hmm. And, oh, God bless, up north, they do have a beautiful, beautiful selection. <laughs> Down here, it's a little bit more limiting. but we'll I think the there. smaller our stores are here, the more a selection they have. They've kind of like gotten on the Amaro train where they hold a number of Italians and also what else we're making here in the U.S. Well, that's going to do it for today. I hope you enjoyed this Amaro 101 episode. Uh, you can find us where you found this episode, as well as radio, satellite, online at iTunes, Google Podcast, iHeartRadio, Spotify, and nearly any place you listen to a podcast. The easiest way to find this show on your phone is to ask Alexa, Siri, Google, or our own Uncle Larry, play podcast, Sip Suds and Smokes. We love your feedback, and you can reach us online at info at sipsudsandsmokes.com. Our daily tasting notes flow out on Twitter every day at at sipsudsmoke, and our Facebook page is always buzzing with lots of news. Do us a favor and take the time to rate this episode if you're listening to us online. That's a big help to us, and we get to see your feedback as well. It should be a million, at least. Well, good old boy Dave, say goodbye. Goodbye. (laughs) Good old boy, Kendall. Thanks for being here. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for inviting me. I learned a lot. Cool. Good old boy, Sparky. I feel like I'm all medicined up now, man. I don't think I can get sick now. Let's do it. Not for like another three years. (laughs) I'm solid. (laughs) Good old girl, Carrie Ann. Thanks for being here. Thank you. This is one of my favorite categories and spirits. And y'all can find me at Straight Up 615 on Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, wherever you socialize. Go to Kendall. Tell us about your blog. My wife and I blog about the good news of good beer at beermakes3.com. This is good old gal Juliana. K 
keep on chuggling and see you next time. This has been a one tan hand production of Sip Suds and Smokes, a program devoted to the appreciation of some of the finer slices of life. From the dude in the basement studios, your host, the good old boys, will see you all next time.